just in case you're wondering. This is a new version of a video that I did a couple of years ago. Understandably, the name of the character that Joanna Cameron is most well known for is fairly controversial these days and because of that very few people got to see my original video on YouTube. So I'm going to do this video again without mentioning the character's name because boy oh boy this lady was one of my favorite superheroes on Saturday morning TV during the mid 70s. Looking back now I realize that the show that featured Ms. Cameron wasn't all that great. It was supposed to be a superhero show but it was saddled by a list of demands by the network censors so that the program would be suitable for young children. As a result, there was no actual fighting in this show. Maybe Joanna would grab someone's arm sternly. But the good old days of TV where you would routinely find Adam West's Batman punching up a storm with comic balloon sound effects? Well, those days were long gone, and every episode had to teach us kids a valuable lesson. But despite its shortcomings, I was enchanted with the show, way more than Shazam, the other live-action superhero show on CBS Saturday mornings at the time. Not sure why. Oh wait, I was a 12-year-old boy, that's why. So anyway, actress Joanna Cameron was the lovely lady who brought this wonderful character to life. She got her start in film in the late 60s with movies like How to Commit Marriage with Bob Hope. Later on, Joanna could be seen on TV shows like Columbo and in several episodes of Marcus Welby, M.D. It was also rumored that at one point she had been considered for the lead role in Love Story. You know, the one that eventually went to Ally McGraw. Joanna was also in a boatload of commercials. So many, in fact, that at the time she was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records for having been on the most TV commercials. And then, of course, in 1975, Cameron was cast in the Saturday morning series that I mentioned earlier. In that show, Cameron played a young high school science teacher named Andrea Thomas, who discovers an enchanted amulet in Egypt that bestows the supposed powers of an ancient goddess on her when she invokes one magic phrase. These powers included superhuman strength, speed, the ability to fly, and telekinesis all of which she dutifully uses, of course, to fight crime. Spanning two TV seasons, just 22 episodes were produced. I am aware that there are a handful of unfilmed scripts out there. Maybe at one point there was talk about a third season, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Filmation did, however, repackage the show in 1978 and spin it into syndication where the character would continue to be popular with 12-year-old boys everywhere. I think it's also important to remember that this character was something of a pioneer on television. All right, let's play a game. Who came first? Wonder Woman, Bionic Woman, or the lovely character portrayed by Joanna Cameron? If you pick Joanna's character, you're correct. Now, let's not forget in the late 60s, there was Batgirl portrayed by Yvonne Craig. So after the series ended, Cameron appeared in a handful of TV movies. And because I am a total geek and superhero nut, this is the appearance that I remember best. Man, I really wanted to like those early Spider-Man TV movies. I really did. But even way back then, I realized that they were just missing something. And it was more than just the really bad special effects. Oh well, Marvel eventually did a great job with the Web Slinger. It would just take a couple more decades to get there. Around the same time, Cameron was also the host of the Navy Network, which produced a TV series in the United States about the aspects of naval life. She also directed a commercial for the Naval Academy titled Razor Sharp. Cameron's last known role was in a 1980 TV movie titled Swan Song. So what happened? Where did she go? I truly believe that maybe, just maybe, Cameron had reached her limit working in an industry that's known for burning through young starlets and swallowing their souls. I know, I know, that's a bit overly dramatic, but there comes a point in almost everyone's life where they need to do something different, sometimes something radically different, and that's exactly what Joanna did. So. Following her acting career, Joanna did a complete 180 and worked in the home healthcare industry for 12 years. It was something that, as anyone who has worked in that field knows, she found very challenging and strenuous. Much of it involved hospice care, and when asked by a fan at a convention about that, she said that it got quite difficult after some time. Because of the emotional and physical wear of home healthcare, 
Cameron again reinvented herself. This time she went back to school and got a degree in marketing. And from what I can tell, most recently has been involved in managing two hotels in Hawaii. If you're going to get involved in the hospitality industry, I can't think of a better place than Hawaii. I'm getting a bit tangential here, but if anyone watches DC's Legends of Tomorrow, you'll notice that the character Zari wears a similar amulet. Yep, it's a nod to that Saturday morning show from so long ago. So that's it. A little bit about Joanna Cameron with a decent helping of her superheroics on Saturday morning. End of the day, much like actress Pamela Hensley, remember Princess Ardala? When she decided to leave the industry, she really left. So anyway, do you remember Joanna Cameron? If so, share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, please click on the thumbs up icon and give this video a like. And I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.